Although enzymes are extremely useful and important biological catalysts that speed up the many reactions that take place within living organisms, enzymes themselves must actually be regulated and their activity must be controlled. And one way in which we can regulate the activity of enzymes is by using special molecules or ions known as inhibitors or enzyme inhibitors. And the two processes of enzyme inhibitors inhibition that can take place are reversible inhibition and irreversible inhibition. So we're going to discuss these two types of inhibition processes in this lecture. So let's begin by defining and examining reversible inhibition. Now, when our inhibitor molecule or ion binds to that enzyme via weak electric forces, via non-covalent forces, and when that inhibitor can easily and effortlessly dissociate from that enzyme following the reaction, this inhibition process is known as reversible inhibition. So basically in reversible inhibition, our inhibitor binds to that enzyme via weak non-covalent forces and at the same time, it can easily dissociate from that enzyme at any given time. Now, there are three different types of reversible inhibition processes. We have competitive inhibition, we have non-competitive as well as uncompetitive. And actually, there's a fourth type known as mixed inhibition, but we're not going to focus on that one in this lecture. So, let's begin by discussing each one of these processes, beginning with competitive inhibition. Now, in competitive inhibition, our inhibitor molecule or ion actually binds to the active side of that enzyme because the structure of our inhibitor actually resembles the structure of our substrate. Now, since the active side is occupied by that inhibitor, that means momentarily our enzyme will no longer be active and that substrate will no longer be able to bind into the active side of the enzyme because that inhibitor will be found inside that active site. So this situation is described in this diagram. So we have the enzyme, we have the substrate shown in green, we have the inhibitor shown in purple, and we have this hole is our active site. So let's imagine we have a one-to-one -one ratio of substrate to inhibitor. And so that inhibitor is just as likely to get into that active site as our substrate. So for this particular case, because we are assuming the affinity of this enzyme to the inhibitor is the same as to our substrate. So we see that once the inhibitor binds to the active side, this substrate cannot get inside and so the enzyme is rendered inactive. Now the special thing about competitive inhibition is the following. For a given fixed concentration of inhibitor, if we begin to increase the concentration of that substrate, for example, we create a 4 to 1 ratio of green to purple molecules, now what happens is these green substrate molecules are much more likely to actually bind into that active site than compared to our purple inhibitor molecule and that means by increasing the concentration of substrate, our substrate can basically compete and outcompete that inhibitor molecule. And this is basically what defines competitive inhibition and what separates competitive inhibition from non-competitive as well as uncompetitive. So, for any given inhibitor concentration, the competitive inhibition can be reversed by increasing the concentration of substrate. That is, the substrate will begin to compete and eventually will outcompete that inhibitor. And once that substrate binds to the active site, that will activate 
our enzyme. So this basically means that if we increase the concentration of substrate high enough, eventually all the active sites will be replaced by that substrate. And that means the overall maximum velocity, Vmax, or the maximum rate of activity of the enzyme does not actually change when we're dealing with competitive inhibition. And because we have to increase the concentration of the substrate to reach that maximum velocity, the Km, the uh, Michaelis constant, has to basically increase. And this means that our affinity for that substrate by that enzyme decreases. Now, let's move on to our second type of reversible inhibition known as non-competitive inhibition. Now, in competitive inhibition, the inhibitor resembled our substrate, but in non-competitive, the inhibitor does not actually resemble our substrate, and that means it does not bind to the active site of the enzyme. It binds to a completely different location known as the allosteric site. Now, since the two sites, the allosteric site and the active site are different, the inhibitor can bind to the enzyme regardless of whether the substrate is actually bound to our enzyme or not. So, if we look at the following diagram, we have the enzyme shown by this brown region. We have this active site, we have the substrate shown in blue, and we have this inhibitor shown in our uh, with our purple color. So, this here is the allosteric site to which our inhibitor will, uh, will bind, and this is the active site. So, what this means here is the inhibitor can bind to the allosteric site regardless of whether this blue molecule, the substrate, is actually found inside that active site. So, once the inhibitor binds to our enzyme, it will slightly deform our enzyme, it will change the enzyme three-dimensional structure and that will also slightly change the structure of our active site. And even though the active site can still bind our substrate, the binding is no longer optimal and the enzyme activity will decrease. So once the inhibitor binds to our allosteric site, that conforms or changes our enzyme, change the shape of the enzyme, change the shape of our active site. Now, even though the substrate can still bind to that active site to form the enzyme substrate inhibitor complex, this is no longer an active enzyme because this shape is not perfect, because this substrate does not fit perfectly into our enzyme. So that means at any given time, because we're going to have the inhibitor bound to our enzyme, that means we'll have less active enzyme molecules and the Vmax will be reduced. However, the ratio basically stays the same, so that basically means that the Km, our Michaelis constant, remains constant, which means that the affinity of the enzyme to the substrate will not be decreased or increased as it was in this particular case. And finally, let's move on to uncompetitive inhibition. Now, the major difference between non-competitive and uncompetitive is in non-competitive, this inhibitor can bind to the allosteric site regardless of whether the enzyme is bound to the substrate or not. But in uncompetitive, the inhibitor can only bind to our site on that enzyme when the substrate actually binds to our active site. In fact, in uncompetitive inhibition, when the substrate shown in blue binds to the active site of the enzyme here, when that binding takes place, only then do we create that site for this inhibitor. So we can imagine this binds, then it creates that site for our inhibitor shown in purple that can then bind to that side to form this enzyme substrate inhibitor complex. So that's the major difference between uh, non-competitive and, comp and uncompetitive. So 
and this inhibitor process, the inhibitor only binds to the enzyme once the substrate is actually bound to that enzyme. And once it binds, it basically deactivates that enzyme. So in this case, the binding of the substrate to the active site creates a new site to which the inhibitor can bind. And once it binds, it deactivates our enzyme. And in this particular case, the Vmax, the maximum velocity the maximum rate of activity will decrease because now we have less enzymes that are active and that will also decrease our Michaelis constant. Now let's move on. Oh, and one last thing I want to mention. Uh, so uh, basically in our competitive inhibition, we saw that by increasing our concentration of the substrate, we can basically kick out our uh, inhibitor from the active side. Now for this particular case, because the inhibitor does not actually bind to the active side, no matter how much we increase the substrate concentration by, that will basically not kick off our inhibitor. So that's the major difference between competitive inhibition and these two types of inhibition. Now what exactly is irreversible inhibition? So remember we have reversible and irreversible. Now, irreversible inhibition basically means that once the inhibitor binds to our enzyme, it will be extremely difficult to actually unbind that enzyme and inhibitor complex. So in this inhibition, once the inhibitor binds to the enzyme, it is very difficult to actually unbind it from that enzyme. And the binding can either be covalent or non-covalent. So all three types of these reversible inhibition processes are non-covalent, but the irreversible inhibition can be non-covalent as well as covalent. So whenever you hear covalent bonding, that usually means irre irreversible inhibition. So this diagram basically shows one form of irreversible inhibition. So basically we have this purple inhibitor binds to some location on the enzyme that blocks this uh, substrate from binding onto the active site and on top of that this inhibitor it will be very difficult to actually take that inhibitor off from our enzyme and this is the major difference between reversible and irreversible. So reversible basically means once we bind our enzyme we, or once we bind our inhibitor to the enzyme, we can easily dissociate it and the bonding is always non-covalent. But in this case, it can be covalent or non-covalent and once we bind it, we cannot dissociate it very easily. For reversible, we have three different cases. We have competitive, we have non-competitive, and uncompetitive. In competitive, basically the inhibitor resembles our substrate and so it binds directly to the active site. And that means if we increase the concentration of our substrate while keeping the inhibitor concentration the same, we increase the ratio and we increase the probability of this substrate binding to that active Side. So we can basically uh, displace that inhibitor from that active site. But in these two cases, our inhibitor does not actually bind to the active site because it doesn't actually resemble the structure of our substrate. In non-competitive, we see that the inhibitor binds to an allosteric site regardless of whether or not the substrate is bound to that active site. But in this case, the inhibitor can only bind to that special site when the substrate binds to the active site which creates that pocket, that site for our inhibitor.